Hello, everybody, and welcome to another session. My name is Dad Radish, and I'm your vegetable father. So we're back to playing Shadow on Dragonfall. Um, it's been a little bit of break. Hope everyone had a good kind of couple of hol holiday season. Um, it was, uh, yeah, it was enjoyable. Um, got a new microphone out of it, so I'm excited about that. Um, my, we, we got my daughter a rock tumbler, um, which is super awesome. She's super excited about it, but, um, we set out up here in the garage. And it is so loud. <laughs> um, I actually, I didn't realize this. I thought you tumbled rocks for like a day or whatever, but to make a really nice shiny rock, you have to tumble for like days on days, <laughs> like two whole weeks. Um, so it's a real testament to her patience. Um, but it's been running for, I mean, just a couple days now, and uh, I had to unplug it. I'm going to have to, like, reset a bunch of settings to get it to run for the right time, because I tried I tried uh, recording with it on, and it was just a, it was, it's a real mess. It's just... <laughs> what are the noise, noise suppression? See what we can do here. Just, yeah, anyway. So that's that's the holiday, I guess. Um, let's get into it. I'm gonna have over to chat here. Just bot showing up anyway. Um, stream health looks good. Okay, let's hop in. All right, we're gonna continue. All right, so at the time we left off, we were headed back into the Kreuzbazar. Uh, Kreuzberg, home to nearly half a million people, and until very recently, Monica Schaefer. So she was the decker in our group, um, the leader. She uh, plugged in to open up the vault and um, got a lethal dose of biofeedback. Um, so that's sort of what we're reckoning with here. Um, we're regrouping back at our, at, at our nominally our home base, so... You step inside and the squalor of the disused, uh, disused Yubon tunnel gives way to the warmth of your safe house. A man waits inside, silhouetted against the dim, fluorescent lighting. Paul Amsel. Something bad has happened, hasn't it? He, step for he steps forward, revealing a pale and expressionless face, light glinting off of steel-rimmed glasses. Paul Amsel, your team's fixer and landlord. Part dealmaker, part information broker. One of the most well-connected men in Berlin. His eyes sweep across the team as he takes it all in. The grim faces, the hard stares. Iger's fury, Monica's absence. I had a feeling. How did she... His face has gone ashen. He swallows. Takes a moment to chew on the words before spitting them out. How did it happen? Okay, so if we had decking, we could say something in the vault security system cooked her brain. It was too quick to be black ice. Uh, black... Uh, I think they would say ice, ice here and not icy. But anyway. Um... Intrusion countermeasures. Let's get our cyberpunk lingo going. Something in the vault security system got her while she was jacked in. It was over in an instant. Or, the run was a setup. One minute she was cracking the safe, the next she was on the ground screaming. Hmm. Do we know the run was a setup? Do we, like, want to make that clear here? Hmm. I don't know. Sure. Shouldn't matter too much, but I just want to get into the roleplay again. Let's lean into it, yeah. Dietrich, I've seen Monica hit black eyes before. This, this was something worse. Glory nods, her motions robotic and spare. Monica died of a biofeedback induced stroke. That's right. I could thrust a glove finger into your chest. And this idiot stood by and let it happen. Ooh, spicy. Brush her finger aside. That's bullshit, Iger. You weren't even in the room. Shove her hand away. Poke me again. I dare you. Ignore it. Let it happen. She jacked in. She screamed and she sees. By the time we saw she was in trouble, it was already too late. Mm. Mm. Yeah, let's push back a little bit. No, I wasn't there. And that's exactly the problem. 
If I had been in your place, Monarch would still be alive and with us. Instead, I left her with you, and now my friend is a corpse in a basement. Look, Iger, sticks right. You weren't stuck in that basement with us. You don't know how things went down in there. So do us all a favor and shut it down, okay? Shut it down? Fuck that. Iger turns to face Dietrich. She towers over him, but he stands his ground. I respect you, Dietrich. You know that. But you don't have my training. None of you have. Monica was good. She was the best, right? But she was also overconfident. She treated the job like it was a game. Do that long enough and you're going to get burned. Iger turns her focus back to you. If you'd been paying attention, you'd have figured out all of this on your own by now. You'd have known that Monica needed watching as much as that door. Enough, Iger. Amsel's voice is hoarse, his expression blank. Enough. Iger pushes ahead, heedless of the interruption. Her voice remains measured, but there's fire in her eyes. How many seconds pass between Monica's first convulsion and her plug getting pulled? Four? Five? Do you know how much damage biofeedback can do to a Decker's brain in five seconds? Um... Okay, now I'm a little pissed. It didn't take that long. We reacted as fast as we could, so I'm gonna say... How dare you? You don't have to answer that. Of course you know. Monica died while you stood there and watched. This is all your f That is enough. Ansel's voice comes out in a roar and his fist smashes down on the desk behind him. On the desk behind him. Okay, I'm just thinking about the... The... Where you have to put your hand to make that happen, you know what I mean? It's kind of a... Anyway. Iger, you and Stick can have it out later, but I've had enough. We need to talk action. Our client sent you into something much bigger than he'd led us to believe. I want to know why. Dietrich, right there with you. This was supposed to be a milk run. Payback isn't the only reason why we need to find him. We saw something back there. Something that we weren't supposed to see. It's fair to assume that we're all still in danger. He pauses, rubs his temples. I think Paul Amsel is my favorite character in the game because he is the dad character. <laughs> this is... Um, I did this a few times today. Ugh. Okay, anyway. Uh, agreed. And to neutralize that danger, we need to know who we are dealing with. Let us review the events that transpired tonight. The smallest detail could be important, so hold nothing back. Okay. Let's see. The estate was just a front for whatever was going on in the basement. After everything went to hell, we were confronted by an orc in military-grade armor. Monica lived long enough to say a name. Hoyer Swinja. 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 Fire Spinch. She fought hard to tell us. It must be important. Um, this is not detailed enough. This has to be the thing, right? So, anyway. Amsel seems taken aback. He pauses for a moment before responding. The Fire Wing. Boyer Schwinge. Yeah. The Fire Wing. This is unexpected. You'll have to forgive me. This brings back many unpleasant memories. Glory raises an eyebrow. The fire wing? The most terrible of the great dragons. There are those who would disagree, but they never experience the terror of living in her shadow. Uh, he glances at Glory. You are far too young to remember her, of course. But for Germans of my generation, the name Feierschwinge is uh, synonymous with chaos, destruction, and death. The dragons of today are subtle creatures, full of patience and guile. Feierschwinge was not. After her awakening, she went on a four-month rampage that claimed tens of thousands of lives. I can't... So this keeps happening in games. I gotta have to take a pause to rant about this a little bit, but... Games... What I was playing? Nowhere Prophet. Was it Nowhere Prophet? Or... Well, uh... Yeah, Nowhere Prophet talks about, like, a disease. Uh, there's, like, a post-apocalyptic thing where there's a disease. This is, uh... Talking about tens of thousands of lives claimed. And here in the United States, we're at... I think the 300,000... Uh... Uh lives lost due to COVID. Um, and I shouldn't compare that. I shouldn't say United States as if it's not an international phenomenon, but the absence of leadership in our country has been absolutely uh, uh, totally overwhelming. And so you keep running into numbers in games like this where the catastrophe imagined in this game is a four-month rampage that claimed tens of thousands of lives. We're in like an eight, not, ten month, ten month scenario for uh, hundreds of thousands. Um, so anyway, uh, it's hard to get away from, and I, I don't know. I don't mean to sort of, like, stop this bit of, um, entertainment for me, <laughs> entertainment for you to go on a, this little rant, but, um, it's, it's hard not to call it out. I mean, this is what the game imagines as something catastrophic that people live through and remember and, and would cause this sort of reaction from this person. Anyway, 
Um, Alright, let's take a breath. Alright, onward. Amsel takes a deep breath, slowly releases it. There is a haunted look in his eyes. Those were dark days. Countless men, women, and children were slaughtered, roasted alive in their homes by a creature of legend. No hope for salvation and no end in sight. It was a horror that you cannot begin to understand. What stopped her? I can't imagine that a rampaging dragon would just go away on its own. Eventually, the fire wing was brought down by a man named Dr. Adrian Valclair. Well, with the help of the Luftwaffe, of course, but it was experimental weapons designed by Dr. Valclair that finally pierced her hide. She fell in a hail of bullets and rocket fire and crashed down in the radioactive wasteland of the Sox, or SOX. So that's a Shadowrun thing that I'm not, I'm not aware of. Uh, this event was called the Dragonfall. Safe at last from the Dragon's Wrath, Germany celebrated Valclair as a hero. Our own Siegfried, a modern-day Dragon Slayer. My own family practically worshipped him, yeah. If the Dragonfall was as important an event as you make it out to be, I'm surprised that I've never heard of it. Those early years of the Awakening were traumatic, Iger. Not just on a national level, but on a global scale. New species of awakened animals were being discovered daily. Within two years of the Dragonfall, the active use of magic had returned to the world, a new source of terror for a bewildered public. And in 2021, I wasn't aware that... Anyway, in 2021, the sudden emergence of orcs and trolls gave rise to yet another wave of global panic. Uh, so this is the thing that separates Dragon... Or sorry, Shadowrun Cyberpunk from other forms of cyberpunk um, is it brings in the fantastical element and says the dragon or the, the awakening is this um, moment where dragons come back to the world and uh, and new uh, species sort of emerge um, bipedal humanist or humanoid species um, so anyway uh, that so yeah that's that's the thing own oh, magic right of course so. In light of such turmoil, is, is it any surprise that Dr. Valclair and the Fire Ring for, were forgotten? Dragons were yesterday's news. He rubs his temples. Again, all of this happened decades ago. To the best of my knowledge, the story of Hoyerschwinga is a bit of historical trivia and nothing more. Alright, so Monica spent her dying breath trying to tell us about a long-dead dragon. Iger sweeps her eyes across the group, searching for a glimmer of insight. Finally, she gives up. Any ideas as to why? Amsel's voice trembles with frustration. No, it doesn't make any more sense to me than it does to you. The Dragonfall's ancient history. Hyershvinga has been dead and gone for 42 years. But there's one thing that I do know. Whatever Monica saw, whatever she was trying to tell us, it was important. He visibly struggles to calm himself, takes a deep breath, then slowly releases it. I will look into this and I will find answers. In the meantime, did you turn up anything else of value? Okay, um... Yeah, this is the next thing I want to say. After everything went to hell, we were confronted by an orc in military-grade armor. He appeared to be the head of security. That is not much to go on. Do any details about this orc come to mind? Any distinguishing features that I could look into? He was an older guy, for one. From the sound of his voice, I'm guessing mid to late 40s. <laughs> Pretty old for an orc. And he had skin grafts. Most of his face looked like replacement material. If the grasp came from a legitimate hospital, there may be medical records. That is something. I will see what I can find out. Did you note anything else during the run that may be of value? The state was just a front for whatever's going on in the base. Well, it's the only thing I can say, but I'm like, there was... We could summon some being... There were all these artifacts? Anyway. Absolute nods. That much is clear. It wasn't a minor enterprise, either. That facility took serious funds to build. And time. There was more to it than we saw. Places like that don't spring up overnight. And all in secret. The owners, whoever they may be, were none too pleased by your escape, I'm sure. What else did you find? That's all we got. That's not much. Amsel nods. His face is drawn and haggard. It is thin, I agree. A basement, a middle-aged orc with skin grafts, and a long-forgotten world event. Um, wait, we're still missing something? You haven't said anything about our client yet, Paul. You holding out on this? Mm, I, okay, I like this one. I'm not, I don't feel super confrontational. Maybe I should, but... All right. What? Amsel looked pained. I do not know his exact identity. I did not set up the run. Monica did. His face reddened. I warned her. Uh, I told her not to take the job, but she assured me that it would be a cakewalk. Hello, let's do this music. Uh, welcome to the stream. Monica was approached by, recently by a man who calls himself Green Winters. He used to be a prominent activist in the F-State political scene. I never much liked the man, and I certainly never trusted him. But Monica, she would do anything for her cause, anything for the Flux State. 
He sighs. Winter swore that the data he was after was crucial to ensuring the future stability of the Flux. But that was all it took. Uh, we need to track down Monica's client and press him for information. It sounds like Green Winters is our best lead then. Uh, yeah, I mean, either of these things is fine. Yes, most definitely. It is clear that Green Winters has involved us in something much larger, larger than he led Monica to believe. Uh, when he finds out what happened on the run, he's probably gonna rabbit. it. We need to chase him down before that happens. All right. Um, how do we find this guy? There's a man here in the Christ Bazaar, a Turk named Altog Buragzi. Buragazi. Buragazi. He owns a little soy calf shop just down the way called Cafe Sevdit. Sezv. Sezv? Sev. I don't know what's silent here. Cafe Sve. This uh, man is also a purveyor of information. I have done business with him from time to time. And you think you would know something about Green Winters? Hamsel nods. When I discovered Monica's renewed association with Green Winters, I contacted Altug. One of his people has been keeping tabs on Winters ever since. As I said, I did not trust the man. Okay, um... For good reason, it would seem. Pragmatic. Uh, say, pragmatic. It sounds like about time I pay Altug a visit. Yes, tell him I sent you. I will do what I can to dig into the information that you've uncovered already. Sparse, as it though may be. Sparse though it may be. Karma! Alright, well, let's... Can we spend it? What is happening? Alright. Pistol, no. Rage. Okay, additional weapon slots, nice. Oh, I mean SMGs. Yeah, I can't hit anything. I really need points to go into this. So I think I am actually going to spend the rest of my... Oh, I can't go above the base stat here, I think, so... Yeah, we'll do it like that. Well, let's talk to the dog. That always seems like a good idea. As you start towards the safe house door, a large four-legged form steps around the corner. Dante. Monica's dog, an enormous mongrel of indeterminate breed. A low whimper emerge, emerges as he enters the room, head hanging low. Oh shit, Dante. Eatrick shakes his head. Don't worry, boy, we'll look after you. At the sight of Monica's dog, Ansel's eyes well up. He inhales, but can't quite catch his breath. He started whimpering about an hour ago. Turned into a full-blown hell. Wouldn't stop. Kept. He closes his eyes. That's when I realized something bad had happened. Looking down into those huge brown eyes, you see intelligence and sadness. He lets out a small whine and rubs his head against you. Hmm. Scratch Dante behind the ears. I know, dog. Gotta give him treats. Dante takes the treat in his mouth, but it's clear he has no appetite for it, and the jerky drops to the floor. He leans into you and looks up mournfully, pressing his ribs against your leg. Guess the dog is going with you, Stick. Why did he get that accent? I don't know, anyway. Um, Amsel takes a ragged breath and releases it. Then a slow, melancholy smile plays across his face. Well, perhaps a part of Monica lives on in Dante. Return to the safe house when you're finished with Altog. Mein Freunden. Freunden? I don't know that name. Mein Freunden. With a little luck, he can help us locate Green Winters, and we can get to the bottom of this. He stares at the floor. And now, I think we should all take a moment. His lips tighten. For Monica. I think we have a room in here. This is our stash. Okay, we don't have anything in here. Our drone. Let's see what else is in here. Talk to Glory. Glory is beautiful in a waifish sort of way. Her features are almost elvish in their delicacy, but there's something cold about her eyes, or, or colder about her, that you find slightly unsettling. What's more unsettling is her chrome. 
Glory's rocking a heavy load out of cyberware from head to toe. She looks to be composed more of plastic and metal than she is of skin and bone. In the shadows, individuals such as this are anything but uncommon. But Glory's cyberware is first generation, all of it. Bulky, invasive, practically museum pieces. This chrome was obsolete well before she was born. Stick. Glory shifts her gaze to you, but her expression is as cool and placid as always. Can I help you? Um, let's see. Any thoughts on what you should do next? Find our missing client, extract some answers. Beyond that, find another Decker. Monica won't be easy to replace. Best start looking now. Uh, okay, well, let's just go into it. I have a question for you, Glory, of the personal kind. I'm not big on sharing sport, personal reasons. You understand, I'm sure. The edge in her voice tells you that she's not interested in continuing this conversation. Uh, sure, I'll un I understand, but I still need to talk to you. Glory lets out a weary sigh. Ask your questions, but do it quickly. I have things to do. Um, I can't help but notice that you seem guarded, withdrawn. <laughs> you can't have started running the shadows much more than five years ago, Tops. So what's with the vintage chrome? Hmm. This one is very melodramatic. Like, more... I don't know. I should lean into that more, I think, in games like this. So I'm going to do it. That's my problem, and none of your concern. Um... If whatever happened to you has impaired your ability to trust me, then it is my concern. Come on, Glory. Talk to me. Uh, ah, okay. Well, seems fine. Trust is earned, and I don't know you yet. Maybe later, when we get to know one another better, we can talk. For now, I prefer you if you dropped it. So that's all I need to know. Fine with me. Anything else you need? I'll talk to you later. She shrugs. Suit yourself. I I'll save for last, because that, that drama is acute. Water around here. Cool, like bike. I wonder if there's an Akira homage happening there. I'm not actually sure. Nerve for Mintar Bet. Mintar Bater. Thought I heard something. Let me make sure, yeah, I'm still sending audio. Right. Um, let's see. Ah, oh, okay, that's the exit, actually. I think the farther you click, the faster they run. I feel like I remember that being... Dietrich turns his head at your approach. His aging face is traced with a network of faint scars, the legacy of too many fights over too many years. While he still retains a degree of strength and vigor, it's obvious that the shaman you see today is a shadow of his former self. Despite all of this, there's still an aura of power surrounding the man. He raises his bottle, offering it to you. Stick, welcome. I've got a bottle of schnapps that need sharing, and we've got a fallen comrade to drink to. Uh, take the bottle, take the bottle. I don't drink. You drink. I have a job. Um, take the bottle to Monica. Prost. Yeah, do it. The liquor in the bottle is crystal clear, and as you raise it, you catch an intoxicating whiff of cloves and caramel. It tastes of sweet corn and walnuts with a lingering uh, aftertaste of buttery toffee. Schnapps? I don't know. Oh, what? No, none of this. Okay, anyway. You swallow a swig, and then return the bottle to Dietrich's outstretched hands. He takes a long pull on the bottle, then locks eyes with you. Let me ask you a question, Stick. What made you choose to come to Berlin? It's funny. Uh, I don't think I've set this up anyway. Um, why do you want to know? Monica told me that you moved here from the Rhine River Megaplex. Made it sound like you'd been there for a good many years. Successful years at that. Leads a man to wonder why you packed up and moved here. Okay, yeah, great. This is where you get to build your own backstory a little bit. Uh, I think I have the security background. That's, um... Oh, you choose an etiquette in the beginning. So I have a security background. And what would I say here? Hmm. Betrayal. Remember my old crew betrayed me. Ain't that a pisser. I can handle all sorts of things, but betrayal always makes me see red. Um... Let's see. 
Did I catch him? Oh, this is very tragic. Um, hmm. Right there with you. I ventilated the son of a bitch before I left the reflex. Dietrich raises the bottle in salute, then takes another swig. The bastard deserved no less. In your position, I've done the same thing. But after all of this went down, you decided to bail out of the reflex and head to Berlin. Am I getting that right? Uh, more or less. There wasn't much left for me in the reflex, and Monica made me a hell of an offer. Yeah, I'll do that. Ah, yes, Monica. Dietrich raises his bottle again, then closes his eyes and takes a long drink. After the moment has passed, he returns attention to you. It all comes back to our girl, doesn't it? So let me ask you, just what was your relationship with Monica anyway? I know that you two knew each other way back, but she was pretty coy about these things. Um, why do you want to know? Monica was my friend. I cared about her. Beatrix shrugs. I don't know. I guess that I just wanted to get to know her better. There are some areas of her life that have always been a mystery. If you could shed any light on them, I'd be appreciative. That's a motive. I like that motivation. Um, I can respect that. So what was the deal between the two of you? Don't leave me in suspense. We are other. Uh, yeah, this seems crucial. We we're business associates. Nothing more. We were friends. We were very close. Let's be all melodramatic about this. That's so. Beatrix raises an eyebrow. Huh. Learn something new every day. Well, anyway, good on you both. Dietrich raises his bottle to you and salute. She was a wonderful woman, and I hope that your time together was happy. Anyway, I've taken enough of your time, and the bottle's almost empty. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time to talk. For what it's worth, I'm happy you're here with us. Dietrich takes a final pull on the bottle and tips it forward, pouring the rest on the ground. Rest in peace, Monica. We'll miss you, girl. All right. Oh, yeah, we'll talk to Amsel here. Stick. Amsel peers at you apprehensively. His eyes are bloodshot, his expression grim. Did you get the information out about Green Winters? No, not yet. Then please continue working. We need to find that man. Alright. Iger, let's hear from you, and then we'll get going. Iger. Iger glares at you, and you can taste the bile in her stare. She, still, she clearly still blames you for Monica's death. Something I can do for you, fearless leader? Um, let's see. I think I'll just say this. You're wrong about me, Iger. I tend to prove that to you. That is kind of how I feel about it. This... Mm, so I know strategically to kind of do... Uh, to kind of, like, talk about military rank stuff. Um, so maybe I'll do this. Yeah, you can apologize for the little outburst that you had in front of Paul and the rest of the team. She replies through clenched teeth. You want to step away from me, Stick, right now. No, actually, I don't. Unless you intend to make me leave. It's tempting, Stick. It's really fucking tempting. But no, I won't hurt you. Not unless you give me give me reason to. Okay, then I guess I'll say this. You're wrong about me, Iger. She stares at you for a moment and looks away. Best of luck with that, Stick. Now please, leave me alone. And I think that's true and fine. Alright, let's get out of here. Let's test this theory. Yeah, see, if you click super far, they run. <laughs> they try to cover the distance. So. Hit the streets. There's our safe house. This is Malit Hoyley. That's weird. I was wondering what that was. It looked like maybe all the snowflakes were animated in one spot. Anyway. The dwarvish tech vendor smiles at you with practiced ease, her almond eyes twinkling from the glare. Uh, with the glare from a dozen trid screens. She speaks in a clipped, heavily accented German. Welcome to the data haven. Can I help you with something? Mm hmm. I need some tech and I'm on a tight schedule. Show me what you've got. Okay. Let's take it in. Okay. Cyberdex drones. I own a Doberman. A uh, smoker lays a smoke trail. That's interesting. I think I can operate two drones at once. So that would be... Medkit on wheels, um, and weapon upgraded, Strato 9. Outfits, consumables, programs. Okay. Yeah, okay. Interesting. I don't want to ask about the exotic stuff yet. I mean, I don't have any, barely have any cash. Um, okay, here's the cafe.
Let's talk to our man. Altug. The man behind the counter looks right past you and at uh, the dog falling close behind. Dante. I will fetch his water dish and perhaps a coffee for our friend here. Um, let's see. Let's take the coffee. Soy calf black. The Turk looks disgusted. Very well. A soy calf. He tisks he <laughs> tisk to himself. Uh, what, what? Okay, hold on. Uh, the man by counter uh, has the broad smile and open demeanor of a classic Turkish street vendor. Welcome, honored defendant. Welcome, and how can Burkog, Burkakza, Burakazi, oh man, Burakazi, Burakazi, serve you today? You would like a cup of coffee, perhaps? Mm, let's keep this up. Coffee? Is in real coffee, not soy calf? Yes, for individuals of refined taste, I offer genuine bean coffee for my native Turkey. The cafe owner looks you in the eye. The tone of his voice grows low and serious. This is a top shelf item, my friend, and not for the general public. Only for those few discerning connoisseurs who can properly appreciate it. I think I'm the sort who can appreciate it. Tell me about the Turkish coffee. It is handpicked by my family in Turkey, a true delicacy of the sixth world. This was considered a luxury even before the awakening, when bean coffee was everywhere. In every street corner, they say. Wudak Ghazi leans in close, lowering his voice to a conspiratorial whisper. Long hours in the shop had perfumed his body with a commingled sense of coffee, incense, and applewood tobacco. Trust me, if your coffee experience has been limited to soy calf, you must not deny yourself this opportunity. You will see God. <laughs> Alright, you sold me. How much? This is a specialty item delivered at some cost. I cannot part with it for less than 50 New Yen a cup. Do it. Deal. I love... So, I don't know, I like coffee in real life, so of course I'm going to get the fake <laughs> pay over pay for the fake computer game coffee. Uh, Wurok Ghazi hands you a ceramic travel cup, which he then fills to the brim with dark steaming liquid. The scent is intoxicating. Is there anything more that I can get you? And then Paul Amsel sends his regards. When he hears Amsel's name, the Turk's voice lowers and his accent becomes less exaggerated. His eyes take on a knowing look. Ah, very good. Please express to Herr Amsel my appreciation of his patronage. If he needs any more catering jobs seen to in the future, I'm always happy to provide. Okay, let's see. Catering? I don't follow. That's a fun one. Um, that's not. I don't think that's the character I'm playing. I should play a, a character like that. Um, let's see. He tells me you're developing the menu for a friend of his now. Her winters, I believe. I want to hear all about it. I like this one. Yes, 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 of course, a wise one. Tommy, come. The young woman bustles in from the back room. Her gum chewing is loud enough to hear over the noise of the coffee grinders. Burakazi spits something out in rapid fire Turkish. As you wish, Uncle, I will see to it right away. Kami offers you a shy grin, snaps her gum, and hurries back into the room that she came from. My girl, Kami, is arranging to make contact with the chef as we speak. This will likely take some time. My chef is a busy man. While we wait, I wonder if you would be so kind as to run a small errand for me. A trifle, really. I hate to trouble you. Uh, I'm embarrassed to even ask, but I would be most appreciative of your help. Okay. Mm. Of course, Herr Burakazi. It is no trouble at all. Altuk's voice lowers to nearly whisper. The errand is simple. Hardly worthy of you. I have installed a number of data taps to Berlin's fiber optic network as part of my civic duty. You understand. These taps provide free, free matrix access for all those who live in the Kreuzbazaar. In order to maintain their, how do I say it, their anonymity, each tap's protocol buffer must be reset every few days. I simply wish for you to visit each data tap and reset it. Uh, simple enough. Yes, yes, it is a simple job. Time consuming and a bit tedious, perhaps, but simple. Just reset the taps and come back when you are finished. There should be three of them scattered around this neighborhood. The first one is just outside. Look for a metal box with the yellow arrows painted on top of it. By the time of your return, I should have the information her Amsel requested. Cool. Um, yeah, a little mini thing. I'm pretty sure they do this just to make you go around the neighborhood. But... Jan Goldsmith. Hello, my friend. The voice that comes from the man in the chair is as enormous as its owner. A deep, booming roar, dripping with unrestrained mirth. A fine day for a soy calf, yes? Um... Every day is a fine day. From the back of the store, the voice of the shop he cuts you off. Don't mind the fool in the chair. He roars like a traumatized walrus, stewing all day in his own sweat. <laughs> the man behind the bar uh, st glares at Goldschmidt, his upper lip curled in disgust. I tolerate him only because he takes a soy calf by the bucket. Goldschmidt responds with a raucous belly laugh. Apparently he finds the shopkeeper's insults to be hilarious. 
Ah, oh, Doug. Uh, Lion of Freundlin. You're as quick-witted and sharp-tongued as ever. I bow to you. Um, I don't know what this is, what the phrase is here. Finish. Are you going to put... Anyway, I'll do this. Are you going to put... Once again, the shopkeep cuts in. To bow to me, you would first have to vacate your chair. The shopkeep claps his hands together, clasping them in front of his chest. I shall summon a team of determined young men and an ox to assist with the task. With luck, you'll be on your feet by nightfall. Goldsmith smiles up at, at you, his small eyes glittering. Enough of this senseless bickering, yes? You have approached me for a reason, yes? Tell me what Jan Goldsmith can do for you. Uh, something bad is going to happen if he doesn't stop interrupting me. Uh, why do you put up with these insults? Don't you have any pride? Uh, this is weird. I don't really want to ask either of these things. It seems like a really sharp way to have a conversation. But anyway, I guess I'm most curious about this. Why do you put up with those insults? Don't you have any pride? I put up with them because they amuse me. The fact that they amuse me infuriates my dear friend Altuk, who in turn hurls more insults. Goldschmidt raises his soy calf cup and salute. And thus, the cycle continues. It is two years now that I've been your customer. Yes, Altug? Two years of soy calf and strained patience. Yes. And I remain happy. And Altug makes money. An ideal business relationship. That all sounds perfectly healthy. Take care, Jan. Goldschmidt gives you a deep nod, his jowls quivering. Until next time, my friend. Uh, I've been muted for <laughs> for a little bit. All right, um, Davin Boxtail Elf, you're here to conduct some business. If so, I welcome you to Metdock Arms and Ammunition. If not, keep right on walking. Let's see. I have cash and I need weapons. Show me the goods. Let's do that first, and then maybe uh, if there's other stuff to ask about, I can. Armored clothing, plus five HP. Grenades. I feel like those would have helped in a couple of. Uh, couple of settings and they're inexpensive too relatively let's see I specialize in SMGs and Uzi 3 range medium range medium shotgun Rifle launcher. Close combat stuff. I think I just have a smart link. So Uzi or Beretta. I have the Beretta 70. 5 medium. 30. Six so is higher, yeah, just higher damage. I don't know what a smart link is. Smoke frag. Makes targets easier to hit. I'll try one of these, I guess. And a frag grenade. Probably because I just feel like it's hard to hit anything. This game. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll do that. 
Welcome back. You need some weapons? For some ammunition, perhaps? I was actually hoping to ask you a few questions. You make a purchase, you can ask as many questions as you like. The corner of his mouth twitches upward. Make a big enough purchase, and who knows? I might even answer a few. So what will it be? Will you buy some guns or will it be on your merry way? In that case, I suppose I'm buying. Very good. Yeah, we're back here. Yeah. Okay. Looking for some taps. Let's see. Zack Flash. This elf has clearly seen better days. His skin is weathered and emaciated as though it had been stretched too tightly over his frame. Track marks mark, uh, line the crooks of his arms and dirty bandages wrap his knuckles. Despite all of this, he seems cheerful enough. The elf fixes his twinkling, bugged out eyes on yours and offers you a broad smile, displaying a set of impossibly white teeth. When he speaks to you, his voice is surprisingly deep. Guten Tag, mein Freundin. You're here for some magic because Zack Flash, he gestures at himself with a dramatic flourish, is your magic man. Uh, I might be interested. Zack cocks his head and offers you a lopsided grin. Well then, I might be able to help you. He begins to twist a strand of his long stringing hair around one of his spidery fingers. His smile remains fixed, a pearly crescent set into a face caked with grime. Um, don't leave me in suspense. What have you got? Oh, a little bit of everything. I've got your Zan and your Hyper, your Nitro and your Nova Coke. If you want it, I've got it. Zack leans towards you and lowers his voice with a conspiratorial whisper. I've even got a special concoction of my own design, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you're serious about getting high. So, you want to conduct a little business? Uh -huh. What's the deal with the special concoction? Flash's grin broadens even further. His mouth is disturbingly large, and there's something menacing about the sight of those two white teeth. This is the real deal, Chummer. A proprietary blend, designed and delivered by yours truly. Pharmaceutical-grade kamikaze cut with genuine spirit residue from the tear, and then mixed with my secret blend of herbs and spices. He produces a small packet filled with iridescent purple granules from the pocket of his dirty jeans. If you want to get high? Buy some Nova Coke and throw yourself a party. But if you want to soar, you get yourself some flash. So, you want to conduct a little business? Uh, show me what you got. Hmm... Two movement, two action points for one round. That is a lot. That is, like, almost all my money for this. Um, just for one round, too. Um, I won't actually use these, I think. So. Alright, let's reset a data tab. Ooh, a cyber clinic. I don't even think I've, I don't think I've ever been in this place. As you approach the elf, you notice that he's in mid-conversation. His lips move rapidly and his voice comes out in a low, quiet tone. The glossy plastic shell of a high-grade comlink glints on his wrist. Listen in on his conversation. Doing your best to look uninterested, you lean in slightly and strain your ears. You find that you can make out the doctor's end of the conversation. No, no, the price I'm quoting you is more than fair. Well below market value, in fact. If you can't pay it, that's your problem. Yes, I know that the price has gone up. This is a seller's market. Well, then you'll just have to find the money or go without. I'm sorry, but I have to go. I have a patient. He presses a button on his comlink and looks up at you, a million dollar smile on his face. Sorry about the wait, my friend. Welcome to the triage cyber clinic. He extends his hand to you. I'm Dr. Xavier Ezkibiel. And your name is? Shake his hand, stick, a pleasure. Yeah, sure. Pleased to meet you, stick. What can I do for you today? I need medical supplies, I need cyberware, I should go. Supplies is good. Um... Yeah, let's just grab a med kit. Yep. No cyber word just yet. Two data taps. Simmy. Warming herself with the dim light of a dying street lamp as the wafer girl looks far too worn for her years. The mother's superior, she says it'll be seven for me to care for. I need to see to them. Uh, you're as high as a kite, aren't you? <laughs> seven what? What do you have to care for? The captain's children. Mother superior says there are seven. She says I'm to be governess to the children. You notice a chip jack poking out beneath the young woman's unruly hair. 
the vacant look in her eyes marks her likely marks her as a likely BTL junkie, lost between reality and any number of better than life virtual constructs. I need money to get back to them. Uh, yeah, BTL. I guess this is like their version of video game addiction, <laughs> but it's more you know, BTL. The the simul simulations are like stronger than reality, so it's like a anyway. Um, this story sounds familiar. I'm gonna say, look, do you know Monica? We're gonna see about this. Monica? Is she one of the sisters at the Abbey? No, wait. Monica. A flicker of recognition flights, flights through the haze in the young woman's eyes. Yes, Monica. She's good to me. Brings me food to eat and tea to drink. Um, something happened to her. Despite the woman's persistent delirium, she seems to glean meaning from your tone. She died? Uh, I'm sorry, she did. The girl grips her head with claw-like hands, tugging her hair as if she might pull her brain out through her skull. I don't like this, but I can't switch it off. The girl's frail body shudders and her eyes grow large, but she does not sob. Instead, she smiles a sad smile, which looks a bit worn all too often. She will go to heaven, she told me. It is a place for good people, stillborn babies, and childhood pets, and she was a good person. The girl began then to mumble herself while fingering the hair that covers the jack in her head. This story sounds familiar. Captain Von Trapp is very well known and respected. The poor deer lost his wife and the children their mother. A child should not be without a mother, and a mother should not be without a child. Have you seen the captain? I'm gonna step away now. <laughs> yes, good, I need to rejoin the children. The fun. Right. Statue. A bizarre monument towers before you. At the top of the pedestal, the form of an angel stands. Its outstretched wings. Hmm. Its outstretched wings looming over the small park. But the material is strange and uneven, giving the statue a cold, Frankenstein-esque appearance. It appears that the artist has welded this monument together from various metal scraps and pieces of junk. As you approach, a small, grimy monitor at the base of the statue flickers dimly to life. The grainy face of a smug, young orc appears on screen. Kunzel. Hello there, I'm Herbert Kunzel, the creator of this monument. What would you like to know? Uh... Statue name. This is my tribute to victory, the victory of anarchy. It is both a citation and parody of the statue we destroyed some 20 years ago. You may remember it from the history trids as the Sieges Saule, or Gold, Gold Elsa. Uh, press 2, installation history. Isn't it obvious? The Sieges Saule, a monument to the hubris of the Prussian state, gets blown to bits. So someone takes a lot of bits and builds a monument to the hubris of anarchy. I mean, what more is there to say? Press 3, about the artist. I am the visionary Herbert Kunzel from the Lindwormer. Lindwormer. You might know me from... Okay, well, there isn't much I'm known for yet, but I intend to change that. All art is born from misery, after all. Fun. That's one of the fun bits. Let's reset this data tab, since... Just to get, get it over with. As you are resetting the data tab, you notice that someone has duct taped a small homemade receiver to the system. An earplug dangles from the receiver. Put the earplug in your ear. The sound of heavy machinery makes it difficult to hear the words that are being spoken. After a moment, you find that you can make out two distinct voices, a nasal woman who speaks like a heavy smoker, and a man who speaks in a high-pitched, breathy tone. Uh, hey, Donthorn. Nice to see you in the chat. A uh, nasal woman. Just heard Monica. Need to verify. High-pitched man. Good for us. I'm going to continue listening. It sounds like a conveyor belt starting to add to the noise of machinery, and you can't uh, make out anything else until it comes to a stop a minute later. High pitched man. I think our next step. Wait. It isn't ready to make a move yet. To be patient. The U steps up. Could be someone more. Uh, continue listening. More conveyor belts start up. All you can hear is the sound of machinery. Continue listening. Some sort of motorized vehicle starts up, drowning out everything else. A bell rings loudly again and again. It sounds like a telephone. You hear the down of sound of a door slamming shut and the noise of machinery suddenly muffled. There's a rattle of plastic and the ringing stops. Nasal woman. The nasal woman's voice can be heard again in a sing-song tone. tone. Guten Tag, how may I help you? Silence. Her tone changes, becomes more businesslike. I heard. Silence. Yes, he knows. I told him it wasn't time to make a move yet. Silence. What do you think I am, an idiot? The council needs to meet again. Silence. I know, getting everyone in the same room is challenging. Getting them to agree on a course of action is going to be even more challenging. From my perspective, the Kreuz Bazaar was only stable because of her. If she really is 
out of the way. Well, we'll see, won't we? Ja, I know, I know. What can I say? Things go slow in the flux sometimes. Um, okay, so my read on this, just very briefly, is the flux state is like the anarchist like governance for this um, region. This is probably the council that does it. The Christ Bazaar is like a is this important area of it. So um, that's that's the that's who I think we're hearing from here. You hear the sound of a door opening again, and the cacophony of machinery fills the line. You can't make out anything more. All right. Phone booth. It's an old obsolete phone booth. It's ringing. Look at the receiver. Voice on phone. A monotone, pitch-adjusted voice begins speaking almost immediately. The Shockwell and Writer's contact for this keys is no more. Sticks is listed as a follow-up contact. Is our only secured line to this keys. Please listen to the following instructions carefully if you are a supporter of our cause. Hmm. Continue listening. We have phone booths in strategic locations throughout the city. Within each one you may find a request posted for specific information. If you can obtain a copy of this information, return here and submit it via the port below the receiver. We will verify the authenticity of the information remotely and post an undoctored copy of it onto the matrix ourselves. It is our stated goal for this information to remain free to all. However, you may be compensated for the sought after information returned to this location. The line goes silent. I'll keep an eye out. The line remains silent. Uh, cool. Dead drop bone booth. Alright, we're gonna. I love that you can just get this to go quickly. Lane. Before you stands a troll. Though it is a stretch to say he's standing at all. His great mass is barely held upright by two vintage prosthetic legs, along with a crutch under one arm. His body clicks and hums with every shift of his weight. Despite these disabilities, his eyes are sharp and calculating. I know you. I haven't been here long. You're the Christ Bazaar, then. Heard Monica had some fresh meat in your stable. Uh, I'm Stick, by the way. Good to meet you, Stick. Name's Alexi Lane. Uh, what do you do here, Mr. Lane? Ache and groan, mostly, and try not to be a bother. There's something you should know about Monica. Something happened to her on the run. You know something about it? Just what my eyes and ears tell me. I had a feeling, besides. Monica almost always comes around after a run to check on everybody. She's long overdue, and now here you are. Here you are in her place. So she's either severely wounded or outright dead. Which is it? Uh, dead. The grizzled troll nods grimly. The servos in his prosthetics complain as he lets loose a heavy sigh. Now that is a shame. She was a hell of a runner, that one. And a good friend. I'll leave you be. Donation for the soup kitchen of Slowed Samuel. Sorry, I'm not surprised. Altruism often comes with an ex expiration date. Samuel Breckenbauer. At the sound of your approach, the orc turns to face you. He wears a severe expression, but there's kindness in his eyes. Guten Tag, Elf. Can I help you with something? I couldn't help overhearing your conversation. I take it you run that a charity of some sort. He nods. Yes, it isn't much, but we do what we can. Such as? Give me specifics. He clears his throat, then begins to count off on his fingers. In the past several years, I have established a shelter where the dispossessed can sleep, a soup kitchen to feed the hungry, and a library for the people of the Christ Bazaar to better themselves. It isn't much, I admit, but it's a start. Uh, a good start, Samuel. You mustn't be so hard on yourself. There are limits to what one man, even a determined man, can and can accomplish. This is true. He nods the orchid his side. Thankfully, some of the residents that I've helped over the years have come back around to help me. I've got 15 assorted orcs and trolls from around the Christ Bazaar working with me now. They help me man the soup line, stock the library shelves, and to do all of the hundreds of other little things that our community organization needs done every day. These extraordinary individuals are living proof that what we do here has value. They are an inspiration to continue forward. She beams at the compliment. From her body language, it's clear that she idolizes Breckenbauer. Now, do you have any more questions? If not, I will bid you good day. I don't wish to sound self-important or rude, but there are many pressing matters that demand my time. Um, are you accepting donations? Yes, of course. We're actually desperate for them. Truth be told, people seem more intent on taking care of themselves than they are in providing for the less fortunate. Of course, these concepts are not unrelated. As poverty increases, increase, so does the crime rate. Assisting the needy increases the quality of life for all. Hmm. Hmm, interesting worldview there. In any event, our shelter has some basic needs that desperately need to be filled. The walls of the shelter are not insulated. New blankets go a long way toward keeping our guests healthy and comfortable. Ideally, uh, we'd like to purchase some space heaters as well. 
With 250, we could make the purchase. Of course, I do not expect you, a relative stranger to our keys, to contribute that much. Whatever you spare could be most appreciated. Sure, let's do it. Here, just take what you need. I've got you covered. Samuel's eyes widen. This is incredibly generous. Thank you, Miner Freunden. Not a big deal, Sam. Do good with it. This is a donation we have reached our first goal. Thank you so much for your kind assistance. I have put your contribution to work stocking the shelter with blankets and heaters. Not a problem. Please do not downplay your contribution. You have shown kindness at a time when few others will. That means something. It means a great deal. Let's talk about something else. Very well, if you wish. What would you like to talk about? No questions. I'm just passing by. All right. Well, I'm anxious to get back to the thing. As I say that, there's this dialogue option. A pair of round eyes peer up at you from under the hood of a grime-smeared winter coat. You recognize him as David, one of the Quest Bazaar street kids. If you had to guess, you'd place him in his mid-teens, though it's difficult to tell beneath the grime and acne marring his face. You've seen him following Monica around between runs, chasing her heels like a lost puppy. She always seemed to have a soft spot for the kid. Oh, hoy, Stick, have you seen Monica around? I've been looking all over for her. Um, hmm. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you, kid. The kid blinks, a blank expression on his face. She's dead, isn't she? Uh, I'm sorry, kid. We all are. Yeah. Look, I, I think I want to be alone right now. Poor kid. Alright, here we go. All took smiles at you from behind the counter. Welcome back, Honor Defendant. How may I serve you? Uh, I've finished with your little trifle, Arab Burakazi. Burakazi. Ah, very good. I assume you had no difficulties. Mm-hmm. I'll say this. Difficulties? No. One of the taps had been modified a bit, though. Someone was using it as a surveillance device. He laughs. Of course they were. I wouldn't be surprised if they weren't. This is Berlin, after all. In the flux, everyone spies. If you do not spy, how will you know who is in power and who will be in power next? If you're here to stay, offend him, you must get used to it. Who enters the Turkish bath will sweat, as my uncle Taydemir Ty says. Nevertheless, I shall have one of my people look into it. Wait, there's more. I listened in on the tap and heard something. Might be important. He eyes you closely, amused. Oh, tell me, O oh listener at keyholes. What did you hear on the surveillance tap you found? I couldn't make out much. A nasal woman and a high-pitched man. They seemed pleased Monica was out of the picture. Turkish, the Turk's face falls. News travels fast in Berlin. These two are known to me. Is there more? The woman got a call. She talked about a council meeting tonight to decide if they should make a move. Then she was drowned out by heavy machinery. He nods grimly. Most excellent. It is indeed fortuitous that you discover this information, though it is not unexpected. I will have one of my people attend this council meeting and report back. Whatever you think is best. Sounds good keeping the loop. Uh, I'll say this. Sounds good keeping the loop. With that out of the way, you let, let us return to our pressing business. He barks a stream of rapid fire Turkish, and the gum chewing young woman comes hurrying out to the counter. The menu for her amsel, uncle. Kami hands you a folded piece of paper. Inside is a memory stick. Please send my consolations to him. The death of Fraulein, Fraulein Schaefer must have hit him hard. Burakazi gives Kami a small nod, and she hurries out of the room. When she's gone, he returns his attention to you. Please express my condolences as well. I only just heard the news. Monica was an important part of this community. He frowns. Few know how important. The memory stick Kami just handed you should contain all the information her Amsel requires from our chef in the field. Should you have chef in the field? Should you require my services in the future, you know where to find me. Until then, good day. All right, all right, all right. What's on the menu board? Today's special is a caramel soy cow. Mm-hmm. back to the safe house. I know, this is actually what's happening there. Hmm. I don't know what that animation is. This. Is it... No, weird anyway. Alright. I should probably save. I don't know if this save game is as buggy as it used to be, but anyway. Ooh, everyone's hanging out. Let's 
stick. Amsel peers at you apprehensively, his eyes are bloodshot, his expression grim. Grim, did you get the information about Green Winters? Yes, I spoke to Altok. He gave me this memory stick. Let us see what this agent has to say. Amsel snatches the memory stick from your hand and slots it into his computer terminal. He navigates a series of command line menus and a wall of amber text floods the screen. Amsel scans it, mouthing the words as his eyes flip back and forth. Gorokazi's agent tailed Green Winters to a hotel in a cesspool of a keys called Drogan Keeper. The hotel is called Das Kessel House. It is a renovated factory nestled deep in the heart of Drogan Kip. It appears that Winters is holed up there. Recently, there was some contention between two gangs over control of this neighborhood. Due to the gang violence, the agent refused to follow Winters inside of the hotel, but he confirms that he is still inside. Well, what are we waiting for? Iger slings her rifle over her shoulder with a single spare motion. Gear up, people. We have a hotel to raid. Gloria and Dietrich pause. Exchange looks with Paul. Just a moment, Iger. Ansel rises from his chair, drawing himself to full height. Even so, he has to crane his neck to look her in the eye. You're an excellent soldier, and nobody questions your competence in the field. Your loyalty to this team is equally commendable. That said, we believe that Stick is the right choice to lead the team. There's a long pause before Iger speaks. When she does, her voice comes out dull and flat. What? Don't mistake this decision for a reprimand. Monica considered your contributions to the team to be invaluable. But we all know that she wasn't comfortable putting a soldier in charge. Iger speaks through clenched teeth. Her words are measured, but her expression is livid. This is unbelievable. You want to put the rookie in charge. Again. She shakes her head. Don't you people learn from your mistakes? Stick is the reason we're still alive, Iger. She kept us together. She led us out of there in one piece. Making her your number one girl. She sounds tired, resigned, but above all disappointed. This is more of your flux state ADC at work, isn't it? Dietrich reaches out, put his hand on her shoulder. It's what Monica believed in. Iger's voice tightens. For a moment, her control slips and her face contorts in grief. Yeah, and look where that got her. She strains to her full height. Let me give you a piece of advice. In the field, only two things matter. The mission and survival. Everything else is a distraction. Your ridiculous politics have no place on a shadow run. Dietrich manages to smile. What can I say? We're German. We have a history of strong political views. Iger sighs. The tone of his resignation returns to her voice. Screw it. Let's put an end to this. I've got the skill and experience to lead this team. Stick, on the other hand, was appointed by Monica as a joke. If she, you'd rather she take the lead, I'll abide by that. But I want to hear each of you say it. Mm. <clears throat> they already have. You just weren't listening. Come on, Iger. Give it a rest. I've no quarrel with you, Iger. I'll do as the group wishes, or this is a waste of time. We should be out looking for green winters. Let's see, um, say they already have, you just weren't listening. You stay out of this. She stabs an armored finger in your chest, hard. The moment she raises her hand to you, Dante's ears lay back and she lets out a low growl. Reflexively, she takes a half step back. I think you've heard what Dante has to say. As for my part, Stick saved our lives back there. You may not believe it, but she did. The way I see it, that means I'd follow her lead a while longer. Glory's voice is uncharacteristically gentle. I trust in Monica's judgment. Therefore, I trust in Stick's judgment. The discussion is finished, Iger. Anchel speaks softly, but his tone is firm. Stick will take Monica's place as the leader of this team. Hmm. Monica's death is her vengeance. Ruin over heads. Aldera takes you to... Great. Hey, Iger, could you grab me a soy cap? Um, let's see. Went in, our, in over our heads, but whatever we stumbled into tonight, I'll see us through it. That's how I feel about this. Glory and Dietrich's not in agreement. Dante nudges your leg with his head. All right, fine. She shakes her head in exasperation. Her voice is heavy with defeat. Looks like the rookie's in charge, again. Let's see. It's time to move on. We need to focus on chasing down Green Winters. Indeed, I have transferred the information that we received from Altug to the computer terminal in the next room. It used to be Monica's personal workstation stick. Now it's yours. Monica kept a variety of notes and dossiers, dossiers on that machine. I would suggest reviewing her notes when you have the time. Amsel turns his attention away from you and back to his computer screen. Good hunting. I will eagerly await your return. I wouldn't suggest driving to Drogan Keep, but the roads aren't safe. Taking the U-Bahn would be faster anyway. Thanks for the tip, Iger. The U-Bahn is... Iger nods and turns to check her equipment. The rest of the group disperses in turn. 
You now command a team of Shattered Runners. When traveling to a new mission locations, you'll be able to choose which members of your team to bring and modify their loadout for the run. When members of your team per become permanently incapacitated on a mission, they'll be automatically extracted for emergency medical care. They'll be patched up and ready for action the next time you return to your safe house. Avoid this loss of firepower by always carrying some Bumona tra trauma kits into the field. These can be purchased at the Street Docs office in the Christ Bazaar. All right. We made it, what, basically past the tutorial, I think, is where we, <laughs> is where we got to here. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's really nothing to put back. Uh, confirm. Okay, I'm going to save here, and we're going to see what happens. I'm pretty sure the last time I checked on this computer, it is really full of stuff. <laughs> um... And I think uh, your workstation and mission computer, the command center for your team's operations, and your last link to the memory of Monica Schaefer. Her thoughts and words live on in the machine. At times, it's easy to forget that she's gone. The cool blue tones of the workstation's main menu fill the screen. Uh, a blinking message in the upper right corner notifies you that you have zero unread messages. Um, let's see. Access the Shadowland BBS. Shadowland connection established successfully. Um... Search BBS for relevant keywords. Let's see. Topics. Killer in Seattle. Who is Blutz? Who is Blutz? I think that's the name. Still recovering the logs. This hot dogger just trashed my land trade hosting server. Sounds like some kid pissed over his cartoons getting cancelled. Left a bunch of garbage files all over my disk and I'll be cleaning them up all day. They should make you pass a dumbass test before you're allowed to deck in this town. Uh, step up your security. Write some white ice programs if you can. At least make the kid's hair stand on end for a few hours next time he tries it. Just make sure that your ice is quick. Heavy hitting ice is no good if it can't catch up with an intruder. The fact that I take advantage of on a regular basis. I think some of these people are featured in other games like Clockwork. Anyway, always running, SCW. Like Clockwork. If the two of you are finished, I did, ha I did have ice on the thing. Track the hole down. The grocery store across the street was piggybacking on my land that left an unsecured jack point in the bathroom stall. Old as hell, maintenance jack and a fuse box, and my security ignored it. Mister mystery solved. Channel land is in your personal tech support board, Lumens. Glad to see your, uh, you fix your own problem. Only way you're going to learn. No more posts in this thread. Post pay data for sale. Attach data to escrow account. The antiquities delivery schedule. Oh, yeah, we got this. Attach data to escrow account. Data will automatically be sold to the highest bidder. Both parties will remain anonymous throughout the transaction. This is something we picked up in the last game. Posting successful. Posting will remain active for two days. All right. Uh, yeah, let's... I guess there isn't there isn't as much there as I thought there would be. All right, we'll get the mission started, and then I figure if he turns in, uh, probably uh, wind it down. Is where we have to go? Oh yeah, you on platforms here. Let's board the train. Where would you like to travel? Assemble the team and travel to the Dust Kessel House Hotel to search for Green Winters. I'll do that. Um... The Drug Pit. Dust Kessel House Hotel and Nightclub. Clown Jewel of Drogan Kippa, the filthiest keys in Berlin. He is. Opening the door to the ground level of the dance club is like bashing your head into a wall of sound. Flashing lights stab your eyes, and the air is perfumed with cheap uh, synthahol and engine grease. Everything in here is cranked up to 11, a playground for the numb. Green Winters is somewhere in this building. You steal yourself with a sensory salt and step inside. The team makes a quick check of their weapons and follows you into Dusk Kessel House. All right. Stick. Dietrich. Uh, ooh, heavy gear. Hand razors. Cool. All right. Dust Castle House Club and Hotel. Last known location. Okay, we'll talk to the bouncer. The troll working the door might be the shortest you've ever seen, and the thickest. Despite the pounding music and the writhing bodies, his face is buried in a comic book. He looks up, gives you a cursory once over, and sighs. Welcome to Dust Castle House, now under new management, again. There's no cover. Just go on in and get your fix. That's Kroner at the bar over there. He'll take care of you. 
He buries his nose back into his comic book while tapping a meaty thumb on the black plastic uh, slung from his belt. A high-powered stun gun. Just play nice or you'll meet Herzap. Have fun. Um, let's see. Well, I'm not going to reveal that I'm looking for somebody. No need for Herzap. I'm just here to party. He stares at you. That's great. Really. Anything else? I was thinking of taking a nap. How about a room? His eyes never leave his comic book. Good look at our front desk clerk. Hotel's closed. Renovations. You want somewhere to crash, go somewhere else. Um, maybe you can take a room deposit now. You know, for when it opens again. I booked a reservation last week. What's the problem? So now I look like the concierge. His voice slows to a crawl. He makes a point of enunciating each word. I point people to the bar. If someone starts trouble, I give them a taste of hair zap. That's it. That's all I do. Now what's it gonna be? The bar or hair zap? Um, I don't have any of these. Anyone else feel like a drink? Have a good time and behave yourself. He returns to his comic book, licks a thick finger, and turns the page. Alright, so I... New objective, find a way to access the hotel area. Alright. The music out here on the floor is way too loud for comfort. The scene going down at the bar is even louder. The dealer on duty stands impassively behind the door. A desperate-looking young, young woman is pleading with him, apparently to little effect. All right, Silky, I'm going to explain how this works to you one more time. I get my cash, and you get your cram. No cash, no cram. Period. But I need it, Kroner, come on. Her voice come out in a desperate whine. Pale skin, sunken eyes, and a trembling lip all point to the early symptoms of withdrawal. And I have cash. I totally do. It's up in my room, but you guys won't let me up there to get it. Hotel's under new management, beautiful. You don't have a room anymore. Whatever was up there, you might as well forget about it. But, but that was all I had, and I, I, you know, I have to get right, soon. Well, maybe we could work out a trade. Cram for services. Services? Understanding slowly shows in the young woman's face. Her eyes go white. Come on, Kroner, you gotta be fucking kidding me. You want the cram or not? She says her jaw, a look of disgust on her pallid face. That ain't gonna happen, Chummer. Not now. Not ever. The bartender shrugs. I give you about half an hour before the shakes sit in. When that happens, you know where to find me. He turns to another customer with a smirk, leaving the desperate young woman crumbled against the bar. One of those sad shadow ru shadow run vignettes. Okay, inspect something. Oh, the hit detection. An expensive bottle of scotch. From the color, you'd guess that the <laughs> contents are at least 50% water. Let's see. Scanning to see who else I might be able to talk to about anything. Party girl. I don't know if I want to talk to the bartender. Let's see. The girl in the corner is a model sim junkie, all wild eyes and nervous energy. She greets you with a smile so wide it's the border on the grotesque. Hey, hey, good looking. Do you want to party? Uh, I'm always down to party. All right, my kind of lady. You got cram, right? I just love a lady that's willing to share. Everybody is all about cram. Um, uh, sorry, I'm not carrying any. Well then, go get some, okay? At the bar, I'll be waiting. We'll see. Okay, so that's an avenue we could take. We can get some cram. Seeing if any dialogue triggers closer here. But I guess not. We'll talk to Silky here. Silk? Silk looks up at you, a look of abject misery plastered across her face. Leave me alone, okay? I've got problems to deal with. Um... Sounds like the new management. The cram habit is a rough thing to shake. I know a place I can help you get clean if you're interested. Uh, that's the... the... what is it? The, um... Uh, the, like, charity place. So I kind of feel like saying, saying that. Who, like, said that he wanted to shake anything? He gives you a sour look. Look around you. Like what you see? Of course you don't. My life is better on cram. Why do I ever want to stop? Uh... Oh, so I can do this with intelligence or charisma. I can say, pointing at Kroner, do you want to wind up working for him? Or Charisma, you're near rock bottom, so when you hit it, there'll be nowhere to go but up. Um, do the Charisma move. No, 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 no. I'll tell you the same thing I told him, that ain't gonna happen. Maybe not, but in order to keep feeding your habit, you're eventually gonna wind up doing something that you regret. Trust me on this. Stop it. Please just stop, okay? I don't need your help, and I don't want it. As strong as Silk's words are, her voice sounds unsure. From the way that she's fidgeting, you can tell you've struck a nerd. So the charisma. Yeah, maybe so. It makes you think that you're the one to help me. Uh, what makes you think that anyone can? 
experience. But nobody can help you if you're not ready to help yourself. If you want people like Cronin out of your life, well, you'll think about it. All at once, something changes in Silk's face. She averts her gaze and pauses long for a moment, her sweaty hands clench and unclench. Finally, she clears her throat and looks back up at, up at you. What you said, it makes a lot of sense. She blinks, steals the glance back, and Croner shudders. You're right, I need help. I'll uh, take you up on your offer. I probably should probably tell you I've tried to clean it before, lots of times. Never really worked out. Take the crew to uh, Kreuzberg to the keys they call the Kreuz Bazaar. Uh, look for a man named Samuel Beckenbauer. He can help you. She nods eagerly, her eyes full of gratitude. I'll do that, I will. Thank you. It's about time I left this place behind. If I never see another Kroner again, it'll be too soon for me. I wish I could get my stuff back in my room first, though. Stupid Glang, closing the whole hotel. Let's do that. Uh, it sounds like the management stole your property. Answer some questions for me, and I'll help you get it back. Really? That'd be... Well, that'd be incredible. Her lips struggle upward into a facsimile of a smile. I really need that money, and I left some things in there. You know, personal stuff. I can be very discreet. My stuff should be up in room 304. That's where me and Nadja and Sarah were saying until... Well, you know, I'll be waiting right here until you get back down. So, what do you need to know? Let's see. I need to get up to the hotel. Uh, no, tell me whatever you can about the gang that's taken over the hotel. Bad guys. I mean, like, real bad guys. The gang that used to run this place wasn't all bad. They kept the cram flowing, and the prices weren't too high. They never hassled me as long as they kept buying. You guys killed them all when they took over. Now I'm stuck dealing with assholes like Kroner. The floor manager, Frank, had a thing for my girl, Sarah. He was always coming on to her, no matter how many times she told him no. I haven't seen her since the takeover, but he won't stop asking about her. The guy's a real creep. That's all I can think of. I steer clear of the new guys when I can. She steals a glance over her shoulder at Kroner, a scowl on her face. She didn't have to tell you why. Have you heard of a guy named Green Winters? No, I don't think... Oh, wait, yeah, I bumped into him here a few days ago. I remember him because his name sounds <laughs> like a kind of chewing gum. I don't think I remember seeing him leave, so he's probably holed up in his room. I'm pretty sure that there's still some people up there, the ones that the gangers miss. I hear they lock themselves in. What can you tell me about the layout? Uh, well, um, it's a nice enough place, you know, for a factory. Let's see. Well, okay, the second floor is a security station. Lots of high-tech tech stuff up there. And I've heard stories about the penthouse level, something about a sealed vault. There's supposed to be something real valuable in there, but nobody knows what it is. Doesn't stop them talking about it, though. Uh, all right, fine. I need to get up to the hotel. You can talk to Frank. He's the floor manager. He'd have an elevator key. She points to the north end of the club. He's over there on the VIP balcony. See the greasy jackass in the oversized suit? The one drooling all over that table dancer? That's Frank. Thanks, you've been very helpful. Sure thing, just hurry back with that stuff, okay? I really, really need it. Uh, okay. It's optional to talk to Frank. Mm, what else is here? It's like a phone, electrical panel. Looks like the elevator's locked down, but the control system is tied to the building's LAN. Rig into the building to call the elevator. That's a pretty clean way in. Let's not talk to anybody else. Elevator panel. Cool. This elevator seems mechanically sound. That's about all it has going for it. Candy wrappers and used syringes litter the floor, and the handrails are inexplicably sticky. It would appear that cleanliness isn't a high priority for the hotel staff. All right. There's a vault in the penthouse, so... Mm. Mm. Let's check it out. A ding. Okay, there's the lock here. Can't get in. Second floor security. Maybe I should have gone to security first. Yeah, let's go to security first. That makes a lot more sense. Regroup now. Great. Right into battle. Um, let's see. Let's actually activate my drone. Okay, so now the drone gets to move.
Put them here. 68 to 55. Let's do the 60. 68. I think I stand back here and it's fine. And then let's give Glory haste. And then, um, This that so a good one. And Lori or Iger rather. I think Iger just needs to set up position back here with some of the longest range ability, so right. what am I gonna do? stand next to that thing, so I think I have to pass. Just pass. Ooh. I have a feeling there would be more. But lucky for me, they're kind of clumping up, so... Cast this lightning AoE and get a bunch of them. Let's try it. Pretty good. Definitely worth doing. Let's take this aim shot. Man, deadly. I was saying two acts and one action that increases the chance of critical. It uses three bullets. Okay, sure. And last one, probably. Hmm. We didn't kill anybody. This is tough because I don't have um, I don't have an attack here, or I won't be able to make an attack. I guess. Uh, wait, is that true? Yeah, it's true. Oh yeah, I'll move up here. This is the next safe spot. Taking pot shots out in the open. Alright. Do I have better to hit than I did before? A little bit, minorly. Let's see. Flanked, flanked. Grab that guy. Try again. Got it. The yeah, Iger should try after this guy. Yep. Range didn't really matter. And then I think Lori can just run up and hook this person. Two and three. This is four. Yeah, let's just go for it. Alright, so we've got the security floor. I think I just took some damage, that's it. Hotel administration terminal. Just wander a little bit, make sure we're covering our bases here. We're not missing like a key card or something. Is this a key card? <laughs> Maybe it's key pop. There's a key card. There's always a key card. This is locked. Uh, okay, all right. All right. Computer, HR serve hotel registration security services, version 1.1. All right, search guest register by name, search current guest register by room number. Uh, sure. Okay. Query customer. Ooh, cool. Uh, 
Wait, is the name Winter's Green? I'm gonna put it in green. Karen is staying on floor four in room 405. Read the attached notes. The guy in the master's suite on floor asked for his room code to be changed again. Paranoid son of a bitch. Anyway, dude's been renting one of our biggest rooms for months. So I guess I shouldn't complain uh, too much. New code is 1989. <laughs> Hello, Bing Cortana. <laughs> My chat is... Uh... No? Okay, anyway. Bing Cortana. <laughs> Hello. Um... And Arc Avengers. I don't know any. I don't know who's real. <laughs> My chat is always full of bots. So anyway, uh, drop a hello in the chat if you're not a bot. Um, okay, 1989. All right, return to the main menu. What room is it again? I just realized. Jeez. Okay, it's true again. Uh, I guess it was my name. Uh, green. 405. 405. Okay, 405. 1989. Oh no, wait, hold on, what else? Let's do some other stuff here. Admin services. Enter the admin password. Ooh, bar. Hmm. Hmm. Let's try Sarah. Nope. Nope, okay. Um. She said her name room is 305. Let's see this. Uh, objectives. Oh, I knew I should have written down what her room was. Uh, let's see. Two key, two of four. Silky Schroeder, Sarah Newman, Nadja Bauer. Read the attached notes. Schroeder, cram habit, two ampules a day, preferred customer. Bliss habit, one pack a day. Notes, sales team, keep the pressure up, signs of becoming a preferred customer. Bauer, recreational, multi drug use, preferred customer. All right. I don't know. Don't know anything else. I wonder how I could get an admin password. I guess if uh, maybe it's something Frank knows. Um, okay, so I didn't learn anything that changes this penthouse counter for me, I think, but we will save. Oop. That's not save. Oh no, is it? Wait, can I? Inspect. As your security panel shows that the store is double mag locked, it'd be easier to tunnel in through the wall than it would be to break through this thing. Hmm. Okay, but I can get in here, or I guess the bathroom. That's gonna be the thing, isn't it? I'm gonna check all the bathrooms of all the floors to see if there's some kind of like code or a tunnel or something. Well, it's gotten late enough. I think I'm going to call it. Um, we did finally have a battle encounter after many, <laughs> after a while. So, um, let's see here. Thanks for tuning in uh, to uh, session two of uh, Shadowrun Dragonfall. Uh, take care. Have a good one. Until next time, everybody.